Star Wars The Phantom Menace was the most disappointing thing since my son. I mean, how much more could you possibly fuck up the entire backstory to Star Wars? And while my son eventually hanged himself in the bathroom of the gas station, the unfortunate reality of the Star Wars prequels is that they'll be around. Forever. They will never go away. There could never be undone. If you're someone who's under the age of like 20, who says his least favorite film in the series is The Empire Strikes Back because it was the most boringest one, then I suggest you shut this review off right now before I carefully explain how much of a fucking idiot you are. So where do I possibly start? Lisa, I hate you crunching. Nothing in The Phantom Menace makes any sense at all. It comes off like a script written by an eight-year-old. It's like George Lucas finished the script in one draft, like he turned it in and they decided to go with it without anyone saying that it made no sense at all or was a stupid, incoherent mess. I guess at this point, who's gonna question George or tell him what to do? I take it, yeah. you say action after we roll camera? I'll say action. You do. No, Some, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I forget. People forget. <laughs> if I forget to say action or cut, just step in and say action and cut. He controls every aspect of the movie. He probably got rid of those people that questioned him creatively a long time ago. I also think that everyone just assumed that a Star Wars prequel would be an instant hit, regardless of what the plot was. Really, how hard could it be to screw up? It's like screwing up mashed potatoes. You boil the water and pour the, the packet. Number one, the characters. The biggest and most glaring problem with The Phantom Menace is the characters. This is like the most obvious part of movie making, but I guess I gotta explain it when talking about this turd. So let's start at movie making 101, shall we? You see, in most movies, the audience needs a character to connect with. Typically, this character is something called a protagonist. When you're in a weird movie with like aliens and monsters and weirdos, the audience really needs someone who's like a normal person like them to guide them through the story. Now this of course doesn't apply to every movie, but it works best in the sci-fi, superhero, action, and fantasy genres. I picked a few examples to illustrate this point. Marty McFly, John McClane, Billy Peltzer, Sarah Connor, Oh, Charlie Bucket, Peter Parker, Cliff Secord, Johnny Rico, Rocky Balboa, and Kevin Bacon. So in addition to being like an everyday kind of schlub, usually the pro protagonist is someone that's down on their luck, in a bad place, or someone where everything just doesn't always go perfectly for them. Either you choose to be at your desk on time from this day forward, or you choose to find yourself another job. Well, maybe it's time to get a real job. No McFly ever amounted to anything in the history of Hill Valley. Eventually, they'll be confronted with some kind of obstacle or struggle that they got to deal with. War! We're going to war! If we like them, we hope they succeed. The drama in the film is the result of us rooting for them against opposition. Go get him, kid. Eventually, our brother will find themselves in the lowest point where it seems like all is lost. But eventually, they'll pull through and conquer whatever force opposes them. You're a terminated fucker. It's satisfying when our hero gets ahead from where they started off at. They make like a change. This is called an arc. Often too, they'll get the girl in the end as icing on the cake. Now I need to explain that I don't think that all movies should be the same or conform to the same kind of structure, but it works well in certain kind of movies. 
So unless they're the Coen brothers, David Lynch, Paul Thomas Anderson, Stanley Kubrick, Alfred Hitchcock, Quentin Tarantino, Martin Scorsese, or Jim Jarmusch, you really shouldn't stray away too far from this kind of formula. Especially if you're making a movie that's aimed at children that has a cartoon rabbit in it that steps in the poopy. Oh. This is all, of course, completely applicable to the original Star Wars film and the character of Luke Skywalker. I want to learn the ways of the Force and become a Jedi like my father. This was accomplished even without all the wonders of modern CGI. Now, with all you've just learned in this video that I've made for educational purposes, who the main character of The Phantom Menace was. I can tell you it's not the Jedi. They were just on some kind of boring mission that they didn't really care about. Fucking boring themselves. What happens to one of you will affect the other. You must understand this. Dalla, because she was some foreign queen, the movie was certainly not really about specifically either. You might be thinking that it's Anakin, because he was like a slave and saved the day at the end by accidentally blowing up the starship. But the audience doesn't meet Annika until 45 minutes into the movie. And then the things that are happening around him are pretty much out of his control or understanding. If a protagonist has no concept of what's going on or what's at stake, then there's no real tension or drama. Without that, there's no story. So the conclusion is that there isn't one. Before the movie opened, I was really excited to hear that Scottish actor Ewan McDonald was going to be playing Obi-Wan Kenobi. I thought that was a great choice, and he'd be perfect as the lead of this movie. But he wasn't really. He just sat on the ship and complained a lot. The Queen's wardrobe may be, but not enough for you to barter with. Not in the amounts you're talking about. So you may like the characters, you know, if you're stupid. But let's ask some real people about the Star Wars characters and see what they say. I pose this simple challenge to them. Describe the following Star Wars character without saying what they looked like, what kind of costume they wore, or what their profession or role in the movie was. Describe this character to your friends like they ain't never seen Star Wars. The more descriptive they could get, the stronger the character, eh? Han Solo. He's a rogue. He's, he's very arrogant. Uh, roguish, if you will. Han Solo is totally dashing. Wannabe dashing. He, he fancies himself a playboy. So, like, he's a, a, a smarmy, cocksure, uh, um, womanizer? Scoundrel. Um, he is, uh, he is pig-headed. Completely sexy. In, like, a bad boy sort of way, where, like, he's gonna ride the line. He's got a bit of a, a, a dark streak to him with, uh, you know, shooting Greedo in the bar. But also, uh, deep down, uh, has a heart of, the thief with the heart of gold. That's his character, really. Qui-Gon Jinn. He is... Stoic? I don't remember that character. Okay, is Liam Neeson with the beard? Oh, yes. Well, he has a beard. Qui-Gon Jinn, and he, uh, he was... <laughs> <laughs> um... Let's see here, um... Stern? C-3PO. His character is the, uh, is kind of the bumbling sidekick. Uh, afraid, scurdy cap, he's timid. C-3PO is anal retentive. Is prissy. Um, well, C-3PO is, is prissy. He's, uh, uh, used a lot as comic relief. He, he's the comic relief. High strong. He's bumbling, uh, effeminate. Queen Amidalan. That is going to be fucking impossible because she doesn't have a character. She is, um... <laughs> She's Natalie Portman. Uh, yeah, like, I, like, just kind of... Um, well, I can't say she's a queen. I was gonna say she's a queen. Normal, I guess. Just kind of normal. Makeup would be a description. I was gonna describe the makeup. Or <laughs> describe Queen Amidala's character. Um, monotone? She is the... She looks completely... <laughs> can't answer that and you know it. So... Uh, she is... 
This is funny, by the way. I get it. Continued in part two.